You taste just like New York before a storm takes hold. You race like you are high, you know. I'm alone, but yeah, I bust my lips on yours. How sweet the night is dark enough. We're only seeing stars. You taste just like New York. You taste just like New York. You taste just like New York. Now I'm alone, but yeah, I bust my lips on yours. How sweet the night is dark enough. We're only seeing stars. Last days in LA save me, baby, from strange times. You catch me cooking in the kitchen, looking in to the fire. Love a brother, bake a burning at the stake, and stick with me under the last palm tree. Sip a little water from a dirty fountain, meant to be the sum of it all. Oh, 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 keep me on the tip of your tongue. Oh, 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 it's one all three in the sun. You don't know. It's hard, it seems to make you so down low You don't know what you want or how to stop When it is not what you've seen in me before But I, I blame it on the sun Yeah We've been tearing a temporary but Spit shines Surfing the current on an 80 proof Surfing your red eyes Love a brother, rate a hot rod And souped up to the nines Sitting on blocks and every elevator in Says it's going up when it's on the rocks. Oh, 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 keep me on the tip of your tongue. Oh, 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 it's one or oh, three in the sun. You don't know what you want or what you got when it is hot. It seems to make you so down slow. You don't know what you got or how to stop when it is not what you've seen in me before. But I, I blame it on the sun. Yeah. You're listening to The Current. I'm Jill Riley, and uh, you are listening to an in-studio session with The Kills. 
And in addition to the music, we're going to have a conversation as well about the new record, and the new record is called God Games. So uh, Allison is here. Jamie is here. Hello. Welcome hey, to the Twin Cities. Thank you very much. Yeah, welcome back. This isn't yeah. my thank first you. time here. No, not our first. Yeah. yeah familiar. Yeah. What um what is it about Minneapolis that uh that do you like think, oh yeah, we're gonna have a we're gonna have a good crowd, we're gonna have a good show. I mean, first off is one of my all time favorite venues to play in the yeah. world. You know, so it's always very and exciting. Seven Street to come. Entry, just wonderful. Yeah. Play. I mean, I don't know. As soon as you, as soon as we read Minneapolis on the tour schedule, I'm just, I just remember these shows. They're all so, just the vibe is great here. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're glad to have you back. Glad to be talking about um, a new record, God Games. Uh, so now you're on tour now. Um, you know, your last tour would have been like. I just like to call it the before times. It wasn't yeah. the before times. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, how far into, you know, when we, it was the before times, you got off your tour. Um, you know, how how long was it before you kind of felt oh, like the it, creative it was, it, vibe coming? It was impeccably timed. Yeah? We finished uh, touring in about November 2019. Had a little break. Um, <laughs> I took and then, a load off and then all of a sudden. And then the... <laughs> And then the P, P. Diddy happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was that. Now, did you feel like, did you feel like getting to work on a record? Or were you like, hey, we have some time. And, you know, maybe you felt like maybe challenged to kind of really throw yourself into it. I felt totally freaked out by what was going on in the yeah. world. It was not really thoughts like that, like, yeah, I have time. I don't like having time. It's not, you know. Um, but we'd already started writing. And we wrote during it. We wrote after. I feel like for me, like when things started to lighten up a bit, so did my creative process started flowing a lot more. Mm -hmm. and I wasn't just worried about my whole family dying. Right. Stuff like that's a little distracting for me. <laughs> so, oh, did you just fix my hair? Yeah, it was doing a loop. Oh, that was very sweet. That is a partnership. <laughs> Creatively, <laughs> friends, all of it. <laughs> Hairdresser. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was really, it just felt so good when we could finally go into the studio. And we were ready. We had everything written. We were ready to go. So it was a really enjoyable experience. Once we, we demoed, didn't we? We did a couple, we did, we demoed yeah. like a couple of songs before, it, you know, went as soon as we finished touring. And uh, we were kind of excited about it. And then all the, all the this, that rubbish happened. Mm -hmm. And you just couldn't help but have to reassess what you're doing. You know, it's like, well, I mean, it just seems like madness now when I think back yeah. to that time. And it was, I remember just feeling like it was going to be a two week problem. And then before long, you've got Mark Ronson showing you how to wash your hands. <laughs> and like, it's just like, what is going on? <laughs> and I need you Mark, to I know that. how to wash my hands. <laughs> I but you know, but you do, do you know do now? Know? Yeah. Do you know now? Uh, well, once it was time to get into the studio, um, was there anything? that you felt was different this time around? Were there any, like, creative boundaries that you knew that you wanted to push? Did you have an intention to to try things a little bit differently? Um, for me, I think I'd sort of, on the la on, on Ash and Ice, I was just starting to work out how to how to run a studio. <laughs> I, was, I was just used to leave that up to other people. And then on this record, I'd really kind of got, sort of mastered the software and the studio vibe thing. Okay. And so I kind of had more power in that sense to be able to realize what was in my head. Because before so, you you just like had to tell somebody, yes, yeah. this really is what I want to do. words yeah. sounds, it's difficult. But in a sense, yeah. because yeah. it was so, ice, that time was so isolated and I'd kind of got this knowledge of, of um, you know, work in a studio, then... Um, I, I, it kind of became a bit more studio based. The, the, the sort of, for me, the music. Yeah, but, but that can open came, a door, you yeah, know. It did. Yeah. yeah, the guitar came right at the end. I didn't have any guitar on, on anything until the last two weeks, and I was having sleepless nights thinking, I've just put myself out of a job. You know? <laughs> right. <laughs> just like writing all these things without a guitar. Right. So yeah. Yeah. So that was different. Yeah, I would say. Um, now. As far as working with a producer, I read the name Paul Epworth. Now, for anyone who 
maybe not know that name. Uh, I mean, I think of an artist like Adele. I mean, he's worked with a lot yeah. of people. Yeah. But my understanding is you guys go back. I mean, you really go back yeah. before he was, you know, super producer to Adele. Um, what was the connection there? What were you kind of hoping that he would be able to offer as a producer? Well, we wanted to use somebody that we knew and somebody that knew what they were doing. And, I, you know, it kind of just worked out. We were trying to find a studio. We were trying to find an environment that we wanted to make this record. And I went to visit Paul at the church one time I was in London before we started. And I was just like, it felt like the place we should make the record. It just felt incredible. Um, you know, it's so hard to go into like super incredible professional studios anymore because they're everyone's just kind of priced out, you know. Um, so it was very exciting to get to do that. And it was easy with Paul because, yeah, we knew Paul. He was our very first hired sound man in 2003. Yeah. He was in the back of our splitter van. Very cool. With us. <laughs> doing our live um, sound. And then he went on to do some things. Yeah, he sure uh, did. Yeah. <laughs> was a really strange, and so did you. It was but... a strange time back then where, where yeah. it was like, yeah, we had Paul Epworth doing our sound. We had Steve Aoki tour managing and driving, driving our van. Driving the van. Yeah. It's really odd. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you're going to thank us in the book. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, you mentioned the church in London. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell me tell me about this studio? Uh, because I was I kept hearing the the name of the record is God Games, and it was yeah. made in a church. And I no thought, relation. Yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> <laughs> but but tell me about uh, being in that studio or that studio in particular. I mean, why was that the one? Well, it was, it's a really famous studio from the, it was Dave Stewart's studio. Um, and so there's been a lot of great things recorded there. Bob Dylan has been there. From <laughs> Minnesota. Okay. And, thank you. <laughs> and of course, um, Roy Orbison. Excellent. Because of the traveling, traveling Wilburys they recorded there. Um, and it's just, it's a really sort of seminal, important, legendary studio in London. And there was no church vibes. No. In fact, they, they, if there was any, like Paul Epworth, when he bought the place, well, he, when he got the place, bought it, I don't know, whatever, when he moved in there, mm -hmm. he got this huge Neve mixing desk for the control room. And it was so huge that it wouldn't fit in the control room. So it dictated that he, so he's got it in the live room. So it's this kind of unusual vibe there where you're, you know, mix, you're, the engineer is sitting in the room with you. It's like an open plan studio with these huge high ceilings because it's a church. Right. Stained glass windows. I didn't like that vibe. It was too daytime for me. So we, while I was wandering around this huge, comp this huge church and there's like a tiny little basement studio. And I said, can we go in there? So that we recorded awesome. most of it in there. <laughs> like, I like it when there's no... There's no sign of what time of day it is. Yeah. Mm. And, and, you know, just like the only the only punctuation is maybe, you know, DoorDash arriving with some breakfast and then you realize it's the morning. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have breakfast anytime. I'm a big breakfast anytime. Uh, so recording at uh, the church in London, uh, the record is called God Games. I'm here with The Kills, Alison Mossart and Jamie Hintz. Uh, so let's talk about a couple of the songs in particular. Um, you know, we started playing, you know, the, the, well, the first single that we had was New York and LA, LA Hex. Hex. Yeah. Um, and New York, the song that you're doing a version of it in the current studio today. Yeah. So I wonder if you could just talk about that song in particular. I mean, was that kind of one of the first ones or was that, um, you know, for you, like, yeah, we definitely want to kind of set the tone with that being like, the first well, what single. What was the yeah. first one? It wasn't that one. Bullet Sound. Bullet Sound. Okay. Was the first, first song. one. I mean, New York was really the first one when Alison sent me that. I just thought, I just got, I you know, but, butterflies, <laughs> swoops and loops. I thought this is definitely the record. You mm -hmm. know, and that was the first one that was definitely for me the, the vibe of the record. Yeah. But it wasn't. It was kind of came in the middle. Yeah, somewhere in the middle. <laughs> yeah, when um when you were recording it, or you know, like even instrumentation, I hear it and I just I almost picture you performing it with like a like an orchestra or something. There's such a Ooh, like a very, very nice. cool hook on it. Um, 
you know, when you were working on the song and also, you know, when you start to learn like the ins and outs of the studio or you can really dig into Pro Tools and you can add, mm -hmm. I mean, is there a point where you have to say, oh, I, now I have the capability to do all this stuff, but I got to pull it back or I want to add more? Yeah, well, I've always been consumed by how about by what you can take away from a piece of music rather than what you can add to it. Mm. You know, I like minimal music. I like there being no fat in in our music. And um and I'm kind of also consumed by how certain genres of music like hip hop and R and B have this much, much wider frequency range, like of sub bass and and even like, you know, start really high end beautifully clear high end things that guitar music struggles with and so that was uh, on on a song like new york which to me was an r&b song really i wanted to do that with a as a guitar band try and sort of expand the frequencies a bit more and and do some sort of like r&b production vibe yeah. on it yeah yeah I'm talking with the kills here on the current, uh, the record God Games. Um, there's another song that you did in the studio, 103. And I wonder if you could talk about that one a little bit. Um, or a lot, whichever one you'd like. <laughs> a little bit, a lot, or somewhere in between. <laughs> I mean, both of the songs we just are talking about, I, Jamie convinced me to get this tiny little Akai keyboard, this $100 keyboard from Guitar Center, and I got it, and I started playing around with it, and I just, songs were kind of, pouring out of me with that thing because it was so freeing um and that's a song that I wrote after kind of during the pandemic I kind of got a bit fussy and just decided to start driving back and forth across the country by myself mm. and um you know, it was an interesting time out there on the road there was nobody else it was kind of you know dark and so that song was really inspired by all the different states I went through, the different, you know, every, every state felt like a country. Everybody was just kind of off axis. It was really um, spooky and also incredible. Um, and I got back to L.A. after one of those drives and wrote that. It's, you know. Were you in the, uh, what do you have, a challenger? I was in the Black Shark. Uh, one of the challengers, yeah. Oh, well, one of. Well, yeah, I have a white shark too. Okay. <laughs> is this a? Is it? The, this must be a more a recent. Uh, the white shark is yeah. newer. Okay. Um, she's a 2014. The black shark is a 2013. Okay. Yeah. Did you feel the like OG. you could? Did you feel like you could drive faster with nobody around? You know what? I was actually just really spooked out by the cops. They were very angry. You know, riots were everywhere. Everything mm -hmm. was going on. So right. I filled my car with cameras and video cameras and things always filming everything because I just thought I'm definitely getting pulled over 600 times right and I never did you never did mm -mm. okay I never even looked at how fast I was going I mean it was just me and semi trucks delivering all the crap everyone was ordering right <laughs> you know, exactly like, how many things from Hobby Lobby do people need during the pandemic is my question because I I don't know. It's so just, much. Apparently, apparently all of it. All of it. <laughs> it's great that that sort of, uh, what's it called? Hobby, Hobby lobby. Hobby lobby. That's, uh, you know, they profit <laughs> from the apocalypse. Right. They really did. And so. Uh, <laughs> going bananas. You, you, you were know, like. Uh, you know, jigsaw puzzles, toilet paper, and water. Yeah. Instead of, um, what was it, uh, smoking the band, and instead of Coors Light, you were like sort of playing the, uh, like the Trans Everybody was scrap fucking. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, around me. <laughs> <laughs> as they're hauling the uh, the uh, the craft goods across the uh, country, yep. the kills. Allison Mossart, Jamie Hintz here in the uh, studio. God Games is the new record. You know, the first I think I remember the first time you guys were here. This many years ago. Um, you know, I, I remember reading a little bit about you, and it was, gosh, this has got to be, well, I know well over a decade ago, more than that, but. Um, I remember you just like having characters when you were performing together. Because I'm like, what? who are Vivi and Hotel? Are the names mm. Allison and Jamie? And it wasn't so much as characters as that, you know, when we were kind of starting something brand new and we yeah. wanted to sort of let go of everything that we had done before and recreate. You know, everything with art is like trial and error. You're trying to get somewhere. You're trying to like make something whole and just as you want it. And so... At that time, when we started this band, we didn't really ever think we'd have a record deal. We didn't, mm -hmm. we know, we were just kind of starting an art pact. And so we had these little nicknames and we, you know, book shows with that and sign things with that. And like, 
that's kind of how we were referred to for the first couple of years. And yeah. it sort of just helped like clean the palate, you know. There was lots um, of reasons for it, you know. It was yeah. just, it was a little mostly tongue in cheek. And yeah. it's sort of, uh, we were coming, we were sort of living in this quite sort of judgmental political punk scene, you know, where even if you wore a pair of blue jeans one day, everyone would point out, oh, point, my, oh my God. God. <laughs> so, <laughs> so in order to be the people that we really wanted to be, mm -hmm. we just kind of had, you know, had these little personas. It was a, it was tongue in cheek, bear, bearing in mind we never thought we would even get a record deal or that anyone would come and see us. And also it was practical because I was getting unemployment benefit at the time, so <laughs> it was practical to not use my real name. Right to have an alias. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I didn't have a working visa. So, <laughs> so like that was wasn't me. Breaking right. the law. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you so much for coming in. Glad thank to see you, you in the Twin us. Cities again. Thanks for having and, us. Uh, We're happy to be back here. It's yeah. awesome. Best of luck on the road. Thank you. The Current is public media made possible thanks to member support.